Hi, I'm Carl Rowland with Sherline Products. Uh, this video is going to cover installation and adjustment of your gib for your mills and lathes. First, I'd like to show you our gib and saddle and how they go together. Uh, this is our oops, this is a bottom view of our cross slide and lathe saddle. One end of the gib is very skinny, and the other end is very fat. It's tapered fit. In order to get it apart, you just push the small end in, and this all comes apart. Okay, your cross slide comes right off of the lathe saddle. Okay, when you get your machine, your saddle will be like so with a rubber band holding the gib in place and there'll be the gib lock holder right there. If you take the gib off and you look at it, you clearly have a very thin end and a very fat end. And then on either side, you have a fat and a skinny side. Okay, the fat side goes down with the skinny side towards you. Okay, and then when you take your cross slide, this dovetail is a 60 and both dovetails on the cross slide are a 60. You match the matching dovetails to each other. Pull the gib back a little bit. Slide your cross slide on. Okay, and then push your cross slide in until it gets, just gets snug. Okay. On a finished part, this gib will be sticking out about a half inch on either side because they're pre-cut to size. This is a full length gib just for the video. Okay. If you go real tight on it, it'll lock this guy up. So what you want to have is snug, but not too snug. Okay. So if it gets tight, just push it on the small end. Just bring it in until it's just snug and your cross slide should go back and forth nice and smooth like that. There's no wobble there. Okay, this is your mill saddle and mill table and it's you're looking at it the same way you would if you were looking at the machine from the operator's side. Okay. If we flip it upside down you can see that the gib is it's the same gib in this position small to large. So on this one, you have a 60 degree dovetail here and your 55 and or 45 in the back. Okay, you match your 60 to 60 on the table, slide it on. It should be even with the back of the mill saddle or very close to it. Okay, then you come from the back side and insert your gib. Again, you want to have the fatter side down and the, towards the saddle and the thin side towards the table. Insert it in, just snug, and again this should move smoothly without any lateral motion whatsoever. Okay, now we're going to unpackage a lathe the same way you get it in the box and show you how the gib is set up on the saddle. Just took this out of the box. We unpack it. The cross line is right here. And lay this up. And if you look at it, your gib is already in place with the gib lock. It's got a rubber band around it. And if we move the, the lathe saddle out to where it's easy to work on, about middle of the machine, gives you easy access. The rubber band has been removed. If you need to adjust the gib, the locking screw is right here that holds the gib lock in place. And you just put the Allen wrench on there and loosen that guy up and you can move the gib in and out. Okay. One turn should do it or half a turn and your gib can move in and out. Okay, if we move it out a little ways, Okay. Now we have the cross slide which has the anti-backlash nut on it. You thread the anti-backlash nut up a bit. Okay, your cross slide has two 60s. You have a 60 on your dovetail on this side of your lace saddle and a 45 on this side. So your 60 and 60 are going to match and spin it in. Okay. Now you can spin free. Okay, now you're going to line up your dovetail and your gib, put them on, and start screwing your screw in. 
Okay. Okay, right there, I locked up a little bit because our anti backlash nut just got close. You're going to want to thread, you're going to screw this in all the way up until it's about a half inch away from the side of your lathe set. Okay, once you're about, it's actually more like an inch away, you've got room to get in here and work. We'll pull this out of the cardboard so you can actually see. look inside here you can see that the anti-backlash nut is now attached to your adjuster gear okay you adjust it until there's only well the tighter the better one or two thousand is legit there's going to be some mechanical backlash in there and then you lock the screw down on your adjuster gear for your anti-backlash nut. Okay, nice and snug. When you get done with that, you have about one or two. And we've got two lines right now, so two thousands. Okay, when you look at the other side, okay, you can see your gib lock and your locking screw for your gib lock. You push this in until it's nice and snug. You should still be able to turn this easily. All right, and that's a good fit right there. There's no, there's no lateral motion, motion at all of the cross slide. You got nice smooth motion back and forth, so that give location there is good. And then we just lock that guy in place with the screw in the bottom. Nice and snug, and that's good to go. Okay, now as you start using your machine, the gibs last for forever. They don't, they don't wear out their plastic glass mix, but they do wear in when you first start using your machine because you're breaking the machine in. All you have to do is loosen that screw right there again, tap your gib in just a little bit more, tighten it up again, and you're back in business. So, so that's it, that's your gib.